Our scripture today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, beginning in the first verse, read for us by members of our music ministry, some of whom you've already heard in our choir this morning. The reading begins in the first verse. And when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And they appeared to be in tongues of fire distributing themselves, and they rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all you that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing that it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And in the last day it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall see dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun will become dark, and the moon will turn blood red, before the great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word word of the Lord. Amen and amen. Thanks be to God for this good word. And as this word pours over us, even as the Holy Spirit poured out on Pentecost, we now come to this word and discover what God did then. He's still doing now and at work in us in what some have called recently disruptive innovation. It's a popular phrase and it's a popular phrase in business in particular, but the, the Holy Spirit came on that first Pentecost and disrupted the world and he is still disrupting it today. Now you and I, we know that there are all kinds of disruptions, some for good and some for bad, and we'll talk more about that in just a moment. But as we encounter God's word together, friends, this word disruption keeps ringing in my ears today. And so I'm going to invite us to come into God's word. Normally I'd say let's unpack it together, but it, given the fact that none of us are packing to go anywhere, it seems like lately, Let's double click on it and find out what God has for us in store today. Let's examine what I mean by disruptive innovation. Let me give a few examples. Well, when you think about, when you think about just the graduates who we've been celebrating the last couple of weeks when they were in kindergarten, all that, not that long ago, back then, as one uh, author put it, oh, it was only birds that tweeted. Tumblr and Social media and Twitter, they all promised that, oh, we'll never be bored again when we engage like this. And yet, oh, we're finding all kinds of new ways to be engaged, right? For example, back then, here's another disruptive innovation, travel. 
Now you log on to your Airbnb account, then you'd have to actually call someone. Our relationship with music has even changed. We play our playlist whenever we want on Spotify now. Back then you'd have to play the album or maybe call a DJ to get them to play it on the radio. Cloud and Dropbox uh, have been invented since then. It, instead of having to mail a file, you can actually download it. Or how about even just the disruption of social media, for good or for bad? Did you know that there are more people involved in active users on just Facebook online in a given month than there were people on the planet 100 years ago? All kinds of disruptive innovation, some of it very good. It allows us, because of it, to be able to be engaged during these days of social distancing to still get the gospel out, and some of it not so good, right? And disrupting human relationship. Disruption. Is it a work of the flesh, or is it a work of the Spirit? And as we'll see in today's text, the Spirit comes to disrupt the human heart for God's good. The human heart often wants to disrupt for our own good. Well, with all that change, that innovation, let's talk about for a moment what has stayed the same. And I want to suggest that the human condition all, all, all the while has stayed the same. We still long for meaning and significance. We still long for being those kind of good disruptors, or, or we still long, let's be honest, for those disruptions to being about our own good. After all, there are still real sacrificial heroes today, not just on Marvel and DC, but real heroes that sacrifice of themselves for others. And there are also real villains today. The human heart continues to be corrupted by sin and evil. And as much as the world may be better than it was in some ways, some decades ago or even a hundred years ago, evil still lurks. And so those disruptions still help us to grow weary and feel tired. Uh, as you turn on the TV or, or your YouTube channel this week, once again, we're encountering the disruption of injustice and of sin breaking in. And let's be honest, the Ten Commandments are broken every day and you and I are often a part of that. How can we get to a place where we want to be? It seems like no matter how hard we work, evil still lurks. The human condition still is plagued and despite our best efforts they still persist of course it's not that we shouldn't keep trying just like our medical teams continue to squash and beat this virus even though we have setbacks it doesn't mean we shouldn't still try right well here we are in this cosmic and physical battle and maybe you like me grow weary sometimes you grow weary maybe COVID-19 fatigue that I've heard talk about is impacting you maybe it's fatigue of the brokenness that we see coming across our screens maybe it's just so much fatigue that you've gone from looking for good disruptions to distractions you know uh, a lot of us are binge watching. A lot of us are binge eating. A lot of us are, are, are scrolling through social media to be distracted. And yet it still doesn't deal with our reality. Our disruptions that we do by our own efforts, our distractions that we do by our own efforts, uh, as good as both may be sometimes, they always fall short. And so Peter's sermon comes to mind here because he makes it clear and the Holy Spirit makes it clear that for real transformation to happen, it needs to come from outside of us. 
Now, as I begin to talk about this powerful work of the Holy Spirit, I know some of us right away are feeling, well, we're especially those who are questioning and asking hard questions about their faith among us, you're feeling, well, that seems a little too out there. Holy Spirit, isn't that just maybe a little too spiritual for me? Well, let me take a step back with you, my friends, for just one moment and say this. The famous Princeton theologian Charles Erdman said, Pentecost has never ended. Souls are still being garnered into God. The work of the Spirit continues, and that work gets proclaimed to us in so many ways, and we'll talk about some of them today, but those of you who are wrestling with the idea of feeling uncomfortable with the Holy Spirit, notice that the Holy Spirit comes and things change. There's evidence for the work of the Holy Spirit. Peter points back to the work of Christ as a testimony to the work of what the Holy Spirit will do and is doing. And even the testimony that we hear of eyewitness accounts of folks hearing in their own language gives evidence of that. But maybe the greatest evidence of the work of the Holy Spirit is the way that folks were garnered into the presence of God, reconciled with God, human hearts being changed from the disciples, moving from a room, hiding to the streets, proclaiming is just one example. And so as we see the transformation as a result of the Holy Spirit, we can begin to see that there's evidence for that. But maybe the best evidence is our incompleteness, our inability, even with the best education, to end evil. You see, you and I are insufficient for the task. We need the Holy Spirit to do that work in us, to transform our hearts and to share it, to move from, as the scripture talks about, living by the flesh in Galatians to living by the Spirit. And that dichotomy is such a stark contrast from selfishness, envy, and and turn our eyes towards the Spirit and think about love, patience, joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, and self-control. What a difference. Now, of course, that work continues on this side of heaven until Christ comes again. But that work is Spirit-led, Spirit-empowered. Real transformation happens. As we saw then, we see and continue to experience now. For today, we remember that the commemoration of Pentecost isn't just a celebration of the birthday of the church. It's a celebration of the Spirit at work convicting us, comforting us, and calling us. You see, when the Spirit works together with God's Word, it convicts us. It convicts us of our brokenness. It reveals our selfish desires and leads us to repentance and leads us from the work of the flesh to the work of the Spirit. I pray that you admit with me that as the Ten Commandments continue to be broken every day and we as we're honest and as the Spirit convicts, we realize that you and I are part of that. As we see injustice on our screen yet again this week and we're heartbroken or fatigued by it, let us confess our sin and seek reconciliation and seek restoration and seek God's forgiveness to move towards the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. God's Spirit is doing that work, bringing about His peace. And as He convicts us of our sin and as it shows up in all kinds of ways, He also comforts us in the brokenness of this world, comforts us as we face the distractions of COVID-19, comforts us when we grieve loss, when we grieve injustice, when we grieve the brokenness of the world, the Spirit intercedes for us as we've read in Romans 8, and intercedes with the cries of our hearts that words cannot express to the Father. The Spirit comforts us in our grief. The Spirit comforts us in our distress. The Psalms are full of prayers asking for the Holy Spirit to intercede and intercede with haste. Comforter, the 
convictor, but he also calls us. He calls us to live into the authority that he's given us in our baptism. He has authorized us to be agents of the Spirit in the world. You're being challenged today that you, to remember that you are baptized and you have the power of the Holy Spirit in you, in you, to be an agent for God's reconciling love in the world. What does that look like? It looks like those fruits of the Spirit like we've already talked about. How do you know it's a disruption from God? You know it when it has love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, and self-control as its mark. As we continue to faithfully proclaim the gospel and faithfully love our neighbor, we do the work of the Holy Spirit. And it's not by our power, but by the power of God in us. We're authorized to do that in our daily vocation, whatever that vocation of yours may be. And that calling, even if we're in quarantine, continues in your daily work. That is the place that God is calling you first. And then as we do that there, it goes out into the world around us to speak on God's behalf with love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, kindness, and self-control. This against this, because of God's work, there is no law, the scripture says. And so I say to you, make no mistake, friends, God is at work supernaturally among us, supernaturally among us, bringing this gift to you and to I double click on it indeed and let the disruptive work of the Holy Spirit, let him disrupt your sin and convict you and lead you in repentance to forgiveness. Let him disrupt even the brokenness that you feel with the comfort of his presence and let him disrupt your distraction to be an agent for his love and work in the world. The Holy Spirit on this Pentecost day is calling you. He's convicting you. He's comforting you. He is disruptive for his good and your good and the good and love of our neighbor. Let's be a part of this movement today. Let's be a part of what the Spirit is doing. Amen and amen.